The myth system is based upon the concept of split ubiquitin, which refers to the ability of ubiquitin to be stably separated into N-terminal, NUBI, and C-terminal, CUB, halves, capable of reconstitution into a full-length pseudo-ubiquitin molecule. While this reconstitution is spontaneous when using wild-type NUBI, introduction of an isoleucine 13 to glycine mutation, producing a fragment called NUBG, greatly reduces its affinity for CUB, thus blocking pseudo-ubiquitin formation. If the NUBG and CUB are fused to protein A and protein B, respectively, and A and B are capable of interaction, then the pseudo-ubiquitin molecule can once again be formed. In myth, integral membrane baits are fused to a tag consisting of the CUB fragment linked to an artificial transcription factor, while preys are fused to the NUBG fragment. An interaction between the bait and prey leads to the reconstitution of the pseudo-ubiquitin, which in turn can be recognized by cytosolic deubiquitinating enzymes, illustrated as scissors. These enzymes cleave after the C-terminus of CUB, releasing the transcription factor, which can then enter the nucleus and activate a reporter system, allowing for selective isolation and identification of cells in which bait-prey interactions occur. Hi, I'm Jamie Snyder from Igor Stagliar's lab in the Departments of Molecular Genetics and Biochemistry at the University of Toronto. Today I'm going to show you a procedure for membrane yeast 2 hybrid, or MIF. And we use this procedure in our lab to study the interactions of integral membrane proteins. So let's get started. Prior to conducting MIF analysis, verify that your bait protein has its N and or C terminus in the cytosol of the cell. The CUB Lexa VP16 tag must be fused to your protein at such a terminus, since the deubiquitinating enzymes necessary for transcription factor release are located.